The heart wants what the heart wants, and my heart really wants to show you how to animate a curve to show electrocardiographs, or ECGs for short. G'day guys, my name is Rob from conceptualize.tech and welcome to this Blender tutorial. So here are a few different examples of how you can illustrate ECGs to make them more interesting and more artistic. But this is the ECG that we'll be animating today. Uh, it's just a simple ECG with the star being a bit more brighter to make it a bit more interesting. So you can follow along today and see if you can use it for something interesting. So let's get into it. All right, so as usual, we're going up to our Blender render setting and changing it to Cycles Render. And we're going to delete the cube and delete the lamp. Next, I'm gonna push seven on my numpad and hold Control, Alt, and zero to snap my camera to the view. So now I'm going to add in a background image uh, so we can copy or model our curve along the ECG, what it looks like. Um, so to do this, I would suggest going to Google and just typing in ECG and finding a background image of ECG that you think looks interesting. Um, and then once you've done that, you can come over to background image tab over here and click on background images and add the image. So I've just made one before, so I'm adding in my background ECG and now we can get to modeling our curve. So we're gonna shift A and add in our Bezier curve and start trying to line it up as best we can with the ECG that we've done earlier. So the curve uh, is really handy since you can have these handles that move uh, and kind of smooth out your curve. So I'll put one there and click E to extrude and move it up to the, the start of our ECG or the first curve. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing this kind of fast uh, so that the viewers don't get bored. Um, but uh, the I guess the animations in the start, the example animations of ECG, uh, I'll just mention that I'll put a link to the beating heart. Uh, it's from another tutorial on, on YouTube that I can send a link to. So if you wanted to make a similar animation, then you can do that as well. Uh, so I'll click E. The one where the ECG was following the image of a heart was just kind of found on Google. And then I, from there, just modeled it in the same way I'm doing now and then uh, animated the curve and it kind of came out really nice, I think. So do that and then E to extrude again. Trying to make sure that I'm following it kind of loosely. Good enough. E to extrude up there. E to extrude again. Ah, that's good enough. Good enough for the tutorial. So now that we've got our curve, it's following the ECG kind of pretty much well. We can add in a, cur a circle, video circle, because if we go to our render, a quick render setting or render example, we can see that the um, the curve isn't rendered. So we need to add in the uh, when we select our curve, go over the curves uh, tab and click bevel object, being the video circle. And you can see it's really really big. Uh, you don't want to scale the actual curve, you want to scale the Bezier circle. And so we scale this right down to, that looks pretty good, and I want that to be a bit sharper actually. And that one too, I think. Not so much. That's okay. Okay, so now we've got that. And that's added. I'll just kind of set up a bit of a scene. I'm just going to change my world to black because I think it looks better and give my curve just an emission shader so I can see it a bit better. So it looks pretty good. Now, before we get to animating the curve, I just want to do one more thing. As you saw in the beginning, we have this kind of first bit of the curve that looks really bright and bigger. And it's actually just another curve that's a little bit fatter. So I'm going to duplicate the curve and then add in another circle or Bezier circle and put it up here and click on one of them, doesn't matter which one, and change it to the second circle. And then I'm gonna scale this down, but not so far as the first one, so about there, so that it's uh, a bit bigger than the first. So now we can get to animating our curve and we do that by looking into the curve tab and down here in this bevel factor which isn't been selected or it was grayed out because I hadn't selected my curve. So it looks like I'm on the fatter curve. So for this, I want, let's say we make our curve animation 70 frames long and at zero frame, 
I want the big curve to be zero and zero. And then I want to go to frame 29. And then I'm going to make the end one and insert the keyframe there. I'm not going to insert a keyframe for the start because the next frame, I'm going to put a keyframe there of one. So now if we see it going, you see this curve is hardly there and it's kind of will be the bright part that follows along. So that one's done. So for the second one, again, at the start, I want it both to be zero and zero. And then at frame 30, I want the end to be one. And at frame 50, I want the start to be one. So now if we play our animation, it's very fast, but you can also slow it down later on, or you can increase these out, but uh, keep the same kind of ratios. Uh, but you can see the the big curve is always uh, at the front of the small curve. And so that's the kind of uh, thing we're going for in this tutorial. So now our curves are animated uh, and they're going well. Um, I'm just going to move the curves onto different render layers. So I'll move the first one or the small one onto layer two and the big one onto layer three. And then I can do um, some compositing so that I make it look like the front is actually really bright and blurred. Um, I'm doing three the render layers because once I've animated the curves, uh, once I've done the compositing for the curves, I'm gonna come back and make a background, just a grid background. Um, but for those of you that are more advanced who don't need to follow a tutorial to make a grid background, um, you can leave from there. Um, so the first render layer, I'm just gonna call it background and put it layer one and we'll use the environment. Uh, curve one is the second one, which is the small curve, and we don't want to use the environment. And curve two, actually probably doesn't matter in this, but just as a general thing, I always don't use the background. So now we can give it a quick test render. Notice that I picked somewhere in between where the curves are so that I can see both uh, curves. So now I can go to my compositor and I can use nodes, use backdrop, and I'll separate them out a bit. Now the most important part of the compositor is when I hold shift and cut across here and add in the output, the viewer node. I say this is most important because then it stops me clicking just the viewer node uh, because the animation will take whatever's into this composite uh, node. So it stops me screwing up. So let's see curve one is good there. Let's duplicate that and go to curve two. Good there as well. So for curve one, I'm just gonna do simple uh, blur and it's only gonna be 10 and 10. And then I'm gonna add in the color mix and change it to screen and then click the render layer for the curve and put it back into the screen so that it's a sharp image with a blur behind it. So pretty simple. And I'm gonna do something pretty similar to the second one, uh, but it's gonna be this blur, uh, and then it's gonna be a second blur, uh, but this one's gonna be 50 and 50. And this one, I'll click this render layer into it. Uh, but the difference is that this render layer is gonna have both blurs going into the screen, whereas this one had a blur and the first render layer going into the screen. So it's a little bit different. And from there, I'm gonna duplicate the screen so that I can put both blur, both the uh, both render layers together, uh, but the the second or the large curve is not bright enough for me, so I'm going to put a color RGB curves in and just up that a bit so that it's a bit brighter. And I'll do it for both, and I think that looks good. That's done, so now the only thing I need to do is add another screen here so that I can add in my background, which I'll make right now. So now that our compositing is done, when we go to animate this, it'll take this into account and make our curve look pretty uh, interesting, more interesting than what it would without compositing anyway. So we can go back to our default and push escape to get out of that render. And on the first layer, which will be our background, uh, I can first get rid of the background image uh, since it's confusing me and go and add a plane and scale it on the X. I want it pretty I want it pretty thin because I don't want this to be a major part, but I want something there. Um, you can make, of course, all sorts of different 
backgrounds, grids. Uh, I'm just going to make a very simple one. So I've got that plane there and I'm going to add an array modifier and I kind of try and I'll just follow the grid of the blender here. Uh, so it's pretty much perfectly on the grid. Uh, and once there, 34 is probably a bit too much. Uh, I'll duplicate it and rotate it on the Z axis 90 degrees and move it to the middle. I don't even know where the middle is now. Somewhere in there and scale it on the Y, on the X, just so we then have a grid in both directions. And I'll have to give that a material. So the material I'll give is a new emission. Oops, emission. And I only want it to be 0.1 strength. And I'll give that other grid the same thing. Um, so it depends on now you, the viewer, of what kind of color you give all your curves. I'll give it a green. I think the green looks cool. It looks kind of sci-fi-ish. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. Now we can go to our render settings and I'll leave it, I'll turn it to GPU and we'll go 100%. We'll, we'll animate it in uh, PNGs. PNGs, it animates every frame as a PNG or the output is a PNG of every frame which is really handy if you're going to go away and then uh, you know something might happen but then you've got all these PNGs that are already rendered so then if something happened let's say it stopped at 30 you could always just come back and render at 30 again so it's always a good idea to render first in PNGs and then you can do any compiling later on so I'll put that in a file that I had before when I was practicing so that's going in that file the sampling uh, 120 is fine for the tutorial. I'll just mention clicking this clock button. It effectively randomizes the noise and basically makes every animation look good. So I'd always suggest putting that um, that little clock on. And for the performance, since I'm using my GPU, I'll change it to 256. If you've got a CPU, just leave it at 64. Should be fine. Um, so with that all in place, now I can click animate and it should start rendering our ECG. So I'll come back when this is finished and we can have a look. Okay, now that our render's done, we can go up to the render setting and play, play rendered animation. And we can see our curve, our ECG is looking pretty good. We have that bright uh, curve at the start of our ECG making it a bit more interesting than a normal uh, straight line. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful and you can use it for uh, some product. Uh, you can follow us or subscribe to us on YouTube to see more Blender tutorials uh, that are science-based. You can go to our website, conceptualize.tech, to see what we've been up to lately and follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you next time. Happy blendering.